Hello everybody, this is Mike History 2 and today I will finally not be making a long video because I'm done with the top 10 worst people in history series and so now I can do some shorter videos. So today I'll be talking about the Battle of Lepanto. So the Ottoman Venetian War of 1570 to 1573 obviously started in, can anyone guess? That's right, 1570. So during this war, the Holy League, which was allied with Venice and had been promoted by Pope Pius V, was sent to rescue the Venetian city of Famagusta on Cyprus, which was being besieged by the Ottomans in early 1571. On August 1st, the Venetians had surrendered after being reassured that they could leave Cyprus freely. However, the Ottoman commander Lalakara Mustafa Pasha, well, that's try saying that like 20 times, who had lost 50,000 men in his siege, broke his word, imprisoning the Venetians. On August 17th, Marco Antonio Bragadin had his skin removed alive and his corpse hung on Mustafa's galley together with the heads of the Venetian commanders Astore Baglioni, Alvise Martinengo, and Gian Antonio Querini. Now, the members of the Holy League were Venice, Spain, Naples, Brabant, Limburg, Lothier, Luxembourg, Neymar, Burgundy, Artois, Flanders, Hainaut, Charolais, Guelders, Zutphen, Holland, Zealand, Milan, Bohemia, Hungary, Croatia, Austria, the Papal States, Genoa, Savoy, Urbino, Tuscany, the Knights Hospitaller, and Parma. So, you know, quite a few countries. The banner for the fleet, blessed by the Pope, reached Naples on August 14, 1571. There in the Basilica of Santa Chiara, it was given to John of Austria, who had been named leader of the coalition after long discussions among the Allies. The fleet moved to Sicily and leaving Messina reached Viscardo in Venice, where news arrived of the fall of Amagusta and of the torture inflicted by the Ottomans on the Venetian commander of the fortress, Marco Antonio Bragadin. All members of the alliance viewed the Ottoman navy as a significant threat both the, to the security of maritime trade and the Mediterranean Sea and to the security of Europe itself. The combined Christian fleet was placed under the command of John of Austria. The various Christian contingents met the main force, that of Venice, in July and August 1571 at Messina, Naples. The Christian fleet consisted of 206 galleys and 6 galleasses, and was commanded <laughs> galleas, anyways, and was commanded by Spanish Admiral John of Austria. I don't get how he's Spanish. Anyways, the illegitimate son of Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor, and half-brother of King Philip II of Spain. Venice contributed 109 galleys and 6 galleasses. 23 galleys came from Spain and its vassals, not including 26 from Naples, 27 galleys from Genoa, 7 galleys from the Papal States, 5 galleys from the Order of St. Stephen and Tuscany, 3 galleys each from Savoy, and the Knights Hospitaller, and some privately owned galleys in Spanish service. This fleet of the Christian Alliance was manned by 40,000 sailors and oarsmen. In addition, it carried approximately 20,000 fighting troops, 7,000 Spanish infantry, 7,000 German, 6,000 Italian mercenaries being paid by the Spanish, in addition to 5,000 Venetian soldiers. Also, Venetian oarsmen were mainly free citizens and able to bear arms, adding to the fighting power of their ships, whereas convicts were used to row many of the galleys of other Holy League squadrons. Ali Pasha, the Ottoman admiral, commanded an Ottoman forces force of 222 war galleys, 56 galleots and some smaller vessels. The Turks had skilled and experienced crews of sailors but had very few janissaries. The number of oarsmen was around 37,000, virtually all of them slaves, many of them who had actually been Christians captured in previous conquests and engagements. The Ottoman galleys were manned by 13,000 sailors and 34,000 soldiers. Advantage for the Christian was a num numerical superiority in guns and cannon aboard their ships as well as the superior quality of the Spanish infantry. It is estimated that the Christians had 1,815 guns, while the Turks had only 750 with insufficient ammunition. The Christians embarked with their much-improved arquebusier and musketeer forces, while the Ottomans trusted in their bowmen. The Christian fleet left Messina on September 16th, crossing the Adriatic and arrived at the group of rocky islets lying just north of the opening of the Gulf of Corinth on October 6th. Serious conflict had broken out between the Venetian and Spanish soldiers, and Venetian Admiral Venier enraged John of Austria by hanging a Spanish soldier for impudence. 
Despite bad weather, the Christian ship sailed south, and on October 6th reached the port of Saimi in Venice, where they remained for a while. Early on October 7th, they sailed toward the Gulf of Patras, where they encountered the Ottoman fleet. While neither fleet had immediate strategic resources or objectives in the Gulf, both chose to engage. The morning of October 7th, after the decision to offer battle was made, the Christian fleet formed up in four divisions in a north-south line. At the northern end, closest to the coast, was the left division of 53 galleys, mainly Venetian, led by Admiral Agostino Barbarigo. The center division consisted of 62 galleys under John of Austria himself, along with Marcantonio Colonna commanding the papal flagship, Venier commanding the Venetian flagship, Paolo Giordano I Orsini and Pietro Giustiniani prior of Messina commanding the flagship of the Knights Hospitaller. The right division to the south consisted of another 53 galleys under the Genoese Giovanni Andrea Doria. A reserve division was stationed behind of the main fleet to lend support whenever, wherever it might be needed, commanded by Alvaro de Bassan. Two galleasses, which had side-mounted cannons, were positioned in front of each main division for the purpose of preventing the Ottomans from sneaking in small boats and sapping, sabotaging, or boarding the Christian ships. This reserve division consisted of 38 galleys. A scouting group was formed from two right-wing and six reserve division galleys. As the Christian fleet was slowly turning, was slowly formed, no sorry, it was formed slowly turning around Point Scrofa, Doria's right division at the offshore side was delayed at the start of the battle, and the right galleys did not get into position. The Ottoman fleet consisted of 57 galleys and two galleys on its right under the pirate Mehmed Sirocco, 61 galleys and 32 galleys in the center under Ali Pasha, and about 63 galleys and 30 galleys in the south offshore under another pirate, Uluk Ali. A small reserve consisted of 8 galleys, 22 galleys, and 64 fustas behind the center body. The lookout on the Real, which John of Austria was on, sighted the Ottoman vanguard at the dawn of October 7th. John called the Council of War and decided to offer battle. The wind was at first against the Christians, and it was feared that the Ottomans would be able to make contact before a line of battle could be formed. But around noon, shortly before contact, the wind shifted to favor the Christians, enabling most of the squadrons to reach their position before contact. Four galleys stationed in front of the Christian battle line opened fire at close quarters at the closest Ottoman galleys, confusing their battle array in the crucial moment of contact. Around noon, first contact was made between the squadrons of Barbarigo and Sirocco, close to the northern shore of the Gulf. Barbarigo had tried to stay so close to the shore as to prevent Sirocco from surrounding him, but Sirocco, knowing the depth of the waters, managed to still insert galleys between Barbarigo's line and the coast. In the ensuing melee, the ships came so close to each other as to form an almost continuous platform of hand-to-hand -hand fighting in which both leaders were killed. The Christian galley slaves, freed from the Ottoman ships, were supplied with arms and joined in the fighting, turning the battle in favor of the Christian side. Meanwhile, the centers clashed with such force that Ali Pasha's galley drove into the Real, and hand-to-hand -hand fighting started around the two flagships between the Spanish infantry and the Ottoman janissaries. When the Real was nearly taken, Colonna came alongside with the bow of its galley and mounted a counterattack. With the help of Colonna, the Ottomans were pushed off the Real, and the Ottoman flagship was boarded and swept. The entire crew of Ali Pasha's flagship was killed, including Ali Pasha himself. The banner of the Holy League was hoisted on the captured ship, breaking the morale of the Ottoman galleys nearby. After two hours of fighting, the Ottomans were beaten left and center, although fighting continued for another two hours. In the Christian right, the situation was different, as Doria continued sailing towards the south instead of taking his position. He would explain his conduct after the, the battle by saying that he was trying to prevent an enveloping maneuver by the Ottoman left. But Doria's captains were enraged, interpreting their commander's signals as a sign of treachery. When Doria had opened a wide gap with the Christian center, Uluk Ali swung around and fell on Colonna's southern flank, with Doria too far away to interfere. Ali attacked a group of some 15 galleys around the flagships of the Knights Hospitaller, threatening to break into the Christian center and still turn the tide of the battle. This was prevented by the arrival of, of the reserve squadron of Santa Cruz. Luke Ali was forced to retreat, escaping the battle with the captured flag of the Knights Hospitaller. Isolated fighting continued until the evening. Even after the battle had clearly turned against the Ottomans, groups of Janissaries kept fighting to the last. 
It is said that at some point the Janissaries ran out of weapons and started throwing oranges and lemons at their Christian adversaries, leading to awkward scenes of laughter among the general misery of battle. At the end of battle, the Christians had taken 117 galleys and 20 galleots and sunk or destroyed some 50 other ships. Around 10,000 Ottomans were taken prisoner and many thousands of Christian slaves were rescued. The Christian side suffered around 7,500 deaths, the Ottoman side about 30,000. The battle was a significant defeat for the Ottomans who had not lost a major naval battle since the 15th century. However, the Holy League failed to capitalize on the victory and while the Ottoman defeat has often been cited as the turning point starting the eventual stagnation of Ottoman expansions. This was by no means an immediate consequence. Even though the Christian victory at Lepanto confirmed the division of the Mediterranean, with the eastern half under firm Ottoman control and the western under the Habsburgs and their Italian allies, stopping the Ottoman encroachment on Italy. However, the Holy League did not regain any territories that had been lost to the Ottomans before Lepanto. The Ottomans were quick to rebuild their navy. By about 1572, about six months after the defeat, more than 150 galleys, eight galleases, and in total 250 ships had been built, including eight of the largest ships ever seen in the Mediterranean. With this new fleet, the Ottoman Empire was able to reassert its supremacy in the eastern Mediterranean. In 1572, the Allied Christian fleet resumed operations and faced a renewed Ottoman navy of 200 vessels under Kilik Ali Pasha, but the Ottoman commander actively avoided engaging the Allied fleet and headed for the safety of the fortress of Modon. The arrival of the Spanish squadron of 55 ships evened the numbers on both sides and opened the opportunity for a decisive blow, but friction among the Christian leaders and the reluctance of John squandered the opportunity. Pius V died on May 1, 1572. The different interests of the League members began to show and the lines began to break. In 1573, the Holy League fleet failed to sail together. Instead, John attacked and took Tunis, only for it to be retaken by the Ottomans in 1574. Venice, fearing the loss of its Dalmatian territory and a possible invasion of Friuli and eager to cut its losses and resume the trade with the Ottoman Empire, started peace talks. The Holy League was disbanded with the Peace Treaty of March 7, 1573, which concluded the Ottoman-Venetian War of 1570-1573. Venice lost the war despite winning the Battle of Lepanto. Cyprus was given to the Ottoman Sultanate and Venice agreed to pay 300,000 ducats. In addition, the border between the two countries in Dalmatia was changed. In 1574, the Ottomans retook Tunis from the Spanish-supported Ifriqiya, which had been reinstalled after John of Austria's forces reconquered the city from the Ottomans the year before. In 1576, the Ottomans assisted in Abdul Malik's capture of Fez, and this reinforced the Ottoman indirect conquests in Morocco. The establishment of Ottoman control over the area placed the entire southern coast of the Mediterranean from the Straits of Gibraltar to Greece under Ottoman authority, with the exceptions of the Spanish-controlled trading city of Oran and strategic cities such as Melilla and Ceuta. But after 1580, the Ottoman Sultanate could no longer compete with the advances in European naval technology, especially the development of the galleon and line-of-battle tactics used in the Spanish navy. Ottoman expansion in the 17th century shifted to land war with Austria on one hand and to the war with Persia on the other. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time for another battle video.